Imagine me trying to land a multi-million dollar jet on what looks like a postage stamp. Surrounded by nothing but ocean, it's moving, pitching with the waves, and you have just a few hundred feet to bring your jet to a complete stop. You might wonder how pilots manage to achieve such a seemingly impossible feat, day in and day out. What does it take to land on a moving aircraft carrier, especially under harsh weather conditions? That's what pilots face every day when landing on an aircraft carrier. Today, we'll explain the complexities of this incredible maneuver. How pilots make it happen, the technologies that help them, and just how dangerous it can be. And here's a question for, for you. How would you feel trying to land on a constantly moving, narrow strip of steel in the middle of the ocean? Stick around to learn just what makes this one of the most thrilling aspects of naval aviation. Landing on an aircraft carrier isn't just difficult. It's often described as one of the most demanding things a pilot can do. First, there's the limited deck space. Unlike a traditional runway that stretches for miles, an aircraft carrier deck is only about 300 to 400 feet long. That's a tiny margin for error. Then there's the fact that the deck is constantly moving. Carriers are not stationary. They're moving through the ocean and their decks are rising, falling and tilting with the waves. Pilots must adjust to these constant changes, making getting the perfect landing approach incredibly challenging. To handle these challenges, pilots undergo rigorous training programs designed to prepare them for the unique demands of carrier landings. This training includes hundreds of practice landings on simulated carrier decks, known as Field Carrier Landing Practice, FCLP, where pilots learn to perfect their approach, speed and timing. They also undergo intensive night landing training, which is incredibly challenging due to reduced visibility and increased difficulty in judging distances. Only after mastering these skills are pilots qualified to attempt actual carrier landings. This rigorous preparation is essential to ensure that pilots can handle the unpredictability and complexity of landing on a moving carrier deck. And if that wasn't enough, sea and weather conditions add even more unpredictability. High winds, rough seas and limited visibility can all make an already tricky landing even more dangerous. The key to stopping a jet on such a short deck is the arresting gear system. When landing, a pilot aims to catch one of the four arresting wires stretched across the deck using the tail hook on their jet. These cables are designed to absorb the kinetic energy of the aircraft, bringing it from nearly 150 miles per hour to a complete stop in just a few seconds. It's a delicate sim. 
delicate process. If the pilot misses all four wires called a bolter, they must immediately take off and try again. To land on a carrier, pilots use specialized approach techniques. They have to be precise, coming in at just the right angle and speed. Unlike land-based runways, carrier pilots are always on high alert, ready to make last-second adjustments. Pilots also rely heavily on landing signal officers, LSOs, who are positioned on the deck and provide real-time guidance via radio. LSOs are experienced aviators who help the landing pilot make necessary corrections, ensuring a safe landing. The communication between the pilot and the LSO is critical. One wrong move could be disastrous. LSOs use specific phrases and thus signals to guide pilots, such as Roger Ball, indicating that the pilot has sight of the visual landing aid and wave off, which instructs the pilot to abort the landing attempt. These precise instructions are crucial for maintaining safety and ensuring a successful landing. There's no sugarcoating it. Landing on an aircraft carrier is dangerous. Even the most experienced pilots can have issues. A small landing area, a moving target, and unpredictable conditions makes this operation extremely risky. On average, around 20% of attempted landings result in a bolter, where the pilot has to take off and try again. This statistic highlights just how challenging and dangerous carrier landings can be, even for seasoned aviators. A misjudgment in speed, angle or timing can lead to a crash, injuries or worse. One example of the challenges pilots face was during a training exercise when rough sea conditions made landing nearly impossible. The pilot had to make several attempts, each time battling the movement of the deck and strong crosswinds. Eventually, after multiple bolters, the pilot successfully caught the third arresting wire. It's a testament to the skill, resilience and training that these pilots undergo. Another notable example involved an FA-18 Hornet during an emergency landing. After experiencing a mechanical failure, the pilot had to rely solely on visual cues and communication with the LSOs to safely land the aircraft. Despite the added stress of VIV malfunctioning systems, the pilot executed a perfect landing, demonstrating the importance of training, quick thinking and teamwork in high-pressure situations. Aircraft carrier landings are one of the most thrilling and dangerous manoeuvres in aviation. Have you ever wondered what it takes to become a pilot capable of such feats? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive, make sure to like and subscribe to Aviation and Nautical Masters for more insights into the incredible world of maritime and aviation operations.